instincts, violence, guns and weapons is the way that you win and have dominance. But if you've got God, that's all you need. Just worship him, and he has all authority and all power. We're going to go to him in prayer at this time. If you're able to stand, we ask that you do so. I want to pray for Brother Larry Robson. He's been very ill for quite some weeks now, and on top of that, apparently he's having heart issues. So pray for Brother Larry Robson that God would touch him. We need to pray for Brother Bernie he, as he's been sick for quite a while also, but he has now actually been in the hospital. I don't know exactly what's, what his condition is, but he's been there five days, so you know it's really serious. They don't keep you long in the hospital nowadays. So pray for Brother Larry and Brother Bernie that God would be with those two gentlemen. We continue to pray for Sister Lyle as she recovers from her surgery. We want to pray for uh, a lady by the name of Stephanie. This is a connection of Sister Kathy Moran. They've been diagnosed with brain cancer. I'm so thankful I know Jesus and that we can go to him with these serious situations. They're serious to us, but to God, they're all the same. So we want to pray for Stephanie tonight. We also want to pray for Sister Blackford. They were on their way to church, and she got ill, so they had to turn around and go back home. So pray for Sister Blackford that God would strengthen and touch her. And then we've also had a request, um, Jewel Sprinkles, who's been coming. She has called in and is having some stomach issues and pain, wanting the church to pray for her. And then we also don't want to forget um, the Fugit, Am Richard Fugit, who passed away. That's the father of Michael Fugit. It used to be Amber Fugit. <clears throat> Amber's been coming on Sunday morning. She normally maybe not stay for the whole, but she's at least here at first word. So I know there's a hunger in her heart, but the loss of his father was sudden and unexpected. So we want to pray for that family that God would, through this tragedy, somehow let his light shine into that family. So we want to lift them up in prayer tonight. Unspoken need. It's an uplifted hand. Like I said, God knows it all. God can do it all. Let's go to him in faith tonight. Father, we're lifting our hands and our hearts in confidence to you, knowing you're on the throne tonight, God, and that as we lift you up, as we have honored and praised you, God, that you can come and you can meet these needs that we brought before you. There's no need, there's no degree of difficulty in your eyes. Father, you can move in every situation. Every circumstance is all the same to you. In this night, God, our hearts may be heavy. Father, we may be confused. We may be struggling. We may be weary tonight. But God, we know that you are more than able to minister to these needs. So God, we come with complete confidence. We come in complete faith and trust in you. Ask you, God, that you would move on every need, every situation, every unspoken hand that was raised your will to be done in their situation. God, we will give you the glory for it. We give you the praise. We give you the honor and we worship you knowing your will to be done. In your name I pray, Jesus. In your name I pray, Jesus. Amen and amen. And you may be seated. Friday at 5.30, young people, you're going to be playing flag football here at the church. So I think most of the youth are already downstairs, but if you know a youth that's not here, is not aware of that, please let them know Friday at 5.30 here at the church. Then Saturday at 8.30 in the morning is the men's prayer and breakfast, so please come be a part of that. And then at 4 o'clock, there will be a memorial service for uh, Richard Fugit, as, Fugit, as I previously announced his passing. There will be a dinner if you're able to help or assist in any way. Please let Sister Heidelbaum know that so she can figure out and coordinate everything that needs to be done for that dinner on Saturday. And then Sunday is Missionary Sunday, so if you've got a pledge that you give an offering for our missions, please keep that in mind for Sunday. If our ushers would come. scripture comes from Deuteronomy chapter 26. Didn't get it loaded. My bad, sister. How fast are you? Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 10 and 11. This is a good scripture, so I'm going to wait patiently, y'all. And 
now behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land, which thou, O Lord, hast given me. And thou, shalt set bef- and thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God, and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee, and unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. I'm glad of every good thing that has given to me. And like that last scripture, I just don't want to have it for myself. I want to share it with even the stranger that's among me, that they can see that my God is a good God. Let's pray over this tithe and offering. Father, we ask that your anointing be over that which is given tonight. God, as we give out of a thankfulness, as we get out of a gratitude, not because we have to, not begrudgingly, but a joyful spirit and thankfulness of having you bless us. I pray an anointing upon that which is given, that your prayer can continue to be a light in this community. Anoint and touch in your name. Amen. Lord bless as you give tonight. One more announcement is the uh, they're taking up that offering. Kids Power Hour, that is the children's Bible study. I guess you would say it on Wednesday night that they meet downstairs. They are going to be making caramel apples on October 9th. So I believe that's the next Wednesday. So if you uh, have any questions about that, please see Sister Denise Brainerd. So she wanted to make that announcement. Let's go back into worship. We're going to sing a song, Kingdom Come. You know, the Lord's Prayer, about everybody knows the Lord's Prayer. And then in there is a phrase, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's easier to say sometimes than to actually allow him to have his will. But that is my prayer tonight. I want his will, his kingdom to come and his will be done.
your kingdom come. Everything changes when his will is done in your life. And the first time I absolutely surrendered, everything changed. When I, he filled me with his spirit, when he saved my soul, everything changed. I'm so thankful. When you let his kingdom come, his will be done, everything will change. We're going to close out with that old chorus. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. If you don't do anything else for me, thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my soul. thankful for the saving power, amen, of Jesus Christ. Praise God, amen. Turn to somebody, greet them in the name of the Lord, let them know you're happy to see them here tonight. Hallelujah. God bless you, my friend. Praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord for some sunshine today. We needed the rain, so I wasn't really complaining about the rain. But uh, I'm glad that we seen the sun today. The grass is green. Amen. You know we live in troubled times. A lot of things are happening in our world today. And uh, a lot of people are calling for peace. Uh, but we know according to scripture that uh, what we are seeing is just going to get worse as the end time unfolds. And uh, I pray for those that have been affected by this hurricane, Helena all the way from Florida, but it seems like that there's been catastrophic things happen as it moved across the land in places like Georgia and, and South Carolina or uh, Virginia, South North Carolina, 
A lot of people are suffering greatly, and uh, we need uh, God to uh, move and, and uh, just touch them wherever they might be. We also have a strike going on that uh, could affect all of us. And uh, uh, we, uh, I don't want to just stoke fears, but it might be good to have a little bit of canned goods in your house and uh, some things of that nature. But one thing I have confidence in our church and probably a lot of churches is that we all be there for each other in times of trouble, and not only just in prayer, but also in uh, support for each other. Uh, I'm not going to let you go hungry, and I'm sure you won't let me go hungry, although you might look at me and say, well, you could miss a few meals, and you'd be okay. Amen. Let's go back to James, the third chapter we were talking about last week about being a peacemaker and a a peacekeeper. So let's read James, the third chapter, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Matthew 5, 9, he said, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity again. Amen. To come in your house of worship. Amen. And to be able to Uh, study your word. I pray, God, tonight that it will have an impact on our lives and be able to help us see our way more clearly in this day and time that we live in, putting our faith and our trust completely in you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray and everybody say amen. Amen. Lord bless you. You may be seated. Last week I started with a phrase about being a peacemaker or a peacekeeper, why it's important, and how God puts a premium on living that way, uh, being somebody that is peaceable, but it is something that is contradictory to our human nature. Amen. Getting along with people is a hard thing to do, right? We talked about friction within a relationship. Sometimes you have them. It's not necessarily bad, but you work your way through it because there are ways. How many know there are ways to resolve your differences? Amen. Seems like we're in a political world now today where uh, people don't want to resolve our differences. And they would rather hate each other than to, than to try to work with each other, right? I, I'm, I am of the age that I can remember I can remember my own life, and especially you that are older than me can remember it, where that didn't used to be an issue, where if you were one party or the other or or something else, you still could go have dinner together, and they'd still marry each other. But nowadays, my goodness, you find out you're this or that, and it's like, oh, forget that, man. I hate you. I mean, those are strong words. Amen. But I think uh, the Lord says, you know what, there are a way to resolve your, you don't have to be a lot. I don't want you to be just like me, and you for sure don't want to be just like me, right? Amen. But I do feel like it's important to be able to work together and to be able to be a, a person that, uh, is, is, uh, uh, that works toward that peace and that workability. Amen. And I'm like anybody else. I, I want to be, you know. Now, I will tell you this. I heard it said, and I'll say it too. Amen. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be a person that's going to accept everything the world wants to do. 
when it becomes a biblical issue, mm. I'm standing on the Bible. And, and, and that's where I'm standing is on the Word of God. And if, if you're trying to say you want my vote, uh, I'm going to look at you from the Word of God and not just, not just because somebody said you need to vote for this way. It's important for us to understand. We have instructions and commands in the Word of God that I believe we need to stay true to. Right? Amen. So let me go on down tonight. Uh, I could spend catching up here on what we did last, last week. Uh, but uh, let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. I read another translation. Let me do it uh, again tonight. Try to be at peace with everyone. Try. Everybody say try. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to try to be at peace with you. I'm going to try to be at peace with you, and I'm going, to try, I'm going to try to live a holy life, right? Amen. Because, this is the important phrase right here, because no one will see the Lord without it. 1 Peter 3, 1 and 2 says, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any, if any obey not the word, they also may be without, without the word be won by their conversation. In other words, live peaceable, right? Live peaceable. Amen. And I, and I realize that 1 Peter is written specifically specifically to wives of lost husbands. But I believe that principle placed there before us transcends gender as it relates to winning other people to the Lord. Right? Especially friends and family members. Man. So tonight I want to I embark on this part or this portion is putting belief into action. Putting belief into action. Because like everything else we've studied uh, so far about applying God's wisdom, and we need God's wisdom in our everyday life, uh, ultimately, how many have ever heard the, the, the phrase, it looks good on paper? It looks good on paper. When I read the Word of God, it looks good on paper. But when, it, when you go to apply it, to your life, sometimes that gets, that's the difficult part. Amen. So putting it into action. Amen. But we also see with some of the stuff that we talked about, uh, putting uh, our feet on it isn't always as easy as explaining what we should do and why we should do it, right? It's like kids, when they get in trouble or they want to do something and you say, no, you can't do that. What's the first thing? What's the, what's the word they're going to ask you? Question mark. Why? Well, just because I said so. Well, why? Why are you saying that? Why can't I do that? And our response usually is, just because. Well, why? I said so. Amen. But understand this. Perhaps the reason we find it so difficult to put our beliefs into action is that our natural tendency in applying these truths to our lives is to make it applicable to someone, always someone other than ourselves. I can tell you, but sometimes we need to turn, we need to turn those fingers at ourselves and tell ourselves, right? How many knows that to be truth? It's always, it's always good to blame somebody else instead of yourself. Or always point the finger at somebody else to try to hide your own faults and your own shortcomings in your own personal life. But if we really take it, take it to heart and we say, you know, you know the phrase, the buck stops here. You heard that? The buck stops here. Or let's just say it this way, the buck stops with me. And then the application of God's word starts with who? It starts with me, not somebody else. Me. It starts with me. Amen. Because if it starts with me, then I will see the blessings of God or I'll see the fruit of it when I begin to apply it to my life. I think that's where sometimes we get frustrated because we read the word of God, but we don't apply the word of God. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll pray some things and then we wonder why we don't get blessed or why there's not an answer to that. Amen. Well, a lot of times we need to stop, look in the mirror and say, okay, am I applying this to my life? 
Because the fruit is in application. I apply it, there's fruit. But our problems usually arise when we ignore the instruction of God for us personally. It's for somebody else, but it's not for me. Somebody else can apply it, but it's not for me. Or then sometimes we will apply it to other people, but then we say it's not applicable to us. So in Proverbs, the 20th chapter and verse 3, here's what it says. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. Let me give you a couple translations of this scripture. Number one says, it's a mark of good character to avert quarrels, but fools love to pick fights. Another one says, any fool can start arguments. The honorable thing is to stay out of them. Just makes sense, doesn't it? I'm not that kind of person. I don't, I, I don't like to argue with people. I, I don't like to, you know, uh, I don't have a problem necessarily with confrontation, but I want it to be in a realm to where you can, you can salvage something when it's done, right? So you got to do it the right way. I don't want to be a fool. I want to be honorable. Now, now we notice here it doesn't say that you should ignore it. It doesn't say that we ignore strife. It says you should cease from it. So we are sometimes good, I believe, at striking you know, the match and throwing it into a pile of dry wood and then act like there's not going to be a fire. <laughs> when you see these big forest fires, why? why? When, usually a lot of times when it comes back, it's because somebody has inadvertently started a fire. I grant you there are times when somebody is, you know, devious and they'll, they'll, they'll strike a fire or start a fire and it causes great destruction. But sometimes it has to do with a storm and lightning or electrical that gets into some dry wood and, and so on and so forth. But there's something about it. Sometimes people just, you know, that's, that's where people come into play. And sometimes when something's going on, they're just, oh, man, what's this? I'm going to strike a match and throw it into the middle of that and watch it go boom. I'm, I don't like that. I, I'm not that kind of person. But understand, if there is friction in a relationship, you have to deal with it. You can't, you can't, it can't go unattended. I always tell, and you probably heard me tell the story before. I come home from school one day at our, at, at, at our house, and we had... We had a garage back in the back, and, and back in the day, you had a 55-gallon drum, and you could go out and burn your trash. How many remembers those days? All right? You could go out and burn your trash. And so my dad had a big bunch of uh, wood stacked up on the uh, one side of the garage, and you had the woods back here, then you had a big open field over here, the big water tower. And uh, I come back, and Mom and Dad were nowhere to be found, and I seen smoke back there. And so I went running back to the, to the uh, back part of the property and, and uh, mom had went out to burn some garbage and it was a windy day and some of, that, some of that fire got over into that field. And they were out there with shovels and rakes and, and that fire was going and they were trying to do something before the fire department got there and, and try to help out. Well, once that thing gets raging, you're, you're toast. You're done. You can't, you got to be careful with that. Another time, another time, started that fire and burnt the garage down. I'm like, now, we need to put that 55-gallon drum 30, 40 feet away from that, that stuff, right? Amen. But ignoring, you can't ignore the problem. you got to deal with it. Amen. And, and it's much better off if you can learn to cease from creating a conflict before it becomes a problem. And so, I want to look at some ways that we can handle conflict. 
Some of these ideas will help you, I believe, avoid conflict. Others will help us resolve conflict. Either way, it will reduce the amount of stress in your life. How many, I, I don't like stress in my life. Can anybody say amen? So if I can reduce stress in my life, thank God. However way I can do that, I'm going to do it. Amen. I want to, I want to redu- reduce that stress in my life, and I want to maximize my relationship. So let's look at something closely. Number one, here are some ways to handle conflict. <clears throat> Number one says, delay your reaction. Say that with me. Delay your reaction. Now turn to your neighbor and say, delay your reaction. Delay. Delay your reaction. Amen. So the first thing that will help us handle conflict in our lives is to delay any reaction that you might have. Think about it for a moment, basically. Just think about it. It doesn't mean that you're not going to come out with the same result. It just means don't blow up right now. Just think about it. Because, you know, sometimes you can get really mad about something and it doesn't mean you're wrong. You could be dead right, but you just need to stop and think about it and then approach it in a way that you can deal with it. Sometimes you may not be able to resolve some things in that, in that manner, but other times you might be able to have some success because somewhere along the line, you and I have been told that it's healthy to fume and fret and that we should get things off of our chest. Oh, it's good. It's good, they say, Brother John. Just get it off your chest. Well, how many people have I just destroyed getting it off my chest? <clears throat> how, how much confidence have I destroyed or somebody's confidence in me if I just get it off my chest? If I just blow up and just tell you what I've... How, what would you think of me if, if you and I had a disagreement and I would just all of a sudden just rear my head back and just tell you what I think. I think some of y'all be flat shocked. Right? You're like, dude, man, I didn't think you were that way. How many have ever been shocked like that one time or another in your life? It's in ministry, Brother Howard, in ministry. That's why we have to be careful because people look at ministry at a different level than they look at everybody else. And you can destroy your reputation real quick if you're not careful with the way other people think about ministry. Not just yours, but ministry in general. So as a minister, I think obeying the Word of God and being very cautious and, and, and putting yourself in that mold that says, you know what, you know, I'm just not going to let it all, get it off my chest. Everybody thinks that. You need to relieve that stress. Just get it off. Well, go lift weights or go walk somewhere. That'd do me some good. So we've been told, holding it in. Holding it in only makes the problem worse. So we use that as an excuse to let the other guy have that minute or that moment when something happens that I don't like. So these strategies, everybody say strategies. We've used these strategies in dealing with conflict many times. We've probably already learned That it doesn't work? Yeah, we blow off steam, right? And you feel it, man, I, mm." and somebody might even say, boy, you told them like it was. I feel better. Eh, just give it a moment and you'll start feeling worse. Right? How many's felt that way? Because sometimes you just can't vent a little bit, you vent a lot. And then we just have to realize that we don't want to cause, we don't want to cause a bunch of damage, right? How many has been hurt by conflict one time or another in your life? You've been hurt by it. Words have been spoken. And you're like, man, I didn't expect that. You know, that's why the word of God is so important, so valuable, because when something like that happens, you need something to lean on. Obviously, if we're having conflict with another person, you can't hold on to it. You know, you hear this expression, and and I've heard it, I'll take it to my grave. What? 
I'll take it to my grave. No, don't do that. Before you get to the grave, you just say, God, relieve me of this. Help me with this. I don't want to take it to my grave. I want it gone before I get to my grave. Right? I want want God to be able to do something in my life that's going to matter eternity-wise. However, when there is conflict in a relationship, we can and should, I'm going to use it again, delay our reaction long enough, here's the important thing, to evaluate what is going on. Because flying off, flying off the handle, it's easy. Hey, Brother Greg, it's easy to pull the pin on a grenade. <laughs> I'm just interested, can you put it back in? Can you put that pin back in? That's important. I can fly off the handle. But to try to fix it after you do that, that's the tricky part. Because if you've got a live grenade in your hand, you're going to be going. Let's read. Let's listen. Hey, man, how many knows an angry person? Right? Hey, man, how many classifies yourself as an angry person? Don't answer that. We can get that way, right? But here, listen, just think it over. Turn to your neighbor and say, just think it over. All right? Proverbs 12, 16 says this. A a fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. And another translation puts it this way. Fools have short fuses and explode all too quickly. But the prudent quietly shrug off insults. I can't change the way you think about me. I, I can't, if there's something going on, don't, don't, get, don't, don't get drugged down by somebody that, that just wants to just tell you what they think or whatever. Amen. I, I'm the kind of person where, you know what, I want to make heaven. I might be hurt. I, it, it might hurt bad. But I don't, I don't want that to get in my heart and set up bitterness. And the next thing I know, that bitterness overtakes my life. And the next thing you know, I'm not where I need to be with God. Or I could fall away from God completely. Why? Because I let bitterness get in my heart. And if that's not taken care of, it's going to grow. And it's going to choke the word of God out. Amen. So please, God, let me quietly shrug off what people say. Another translation of that same verse right there states it this way. A fool shows his annoyance at once. But a prudent man overlooks the insult. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, don't be a fool. (laughs) A delayed reaction will give you time to do what? Well, we've said it already. Evaluate. It'll give me time to help. It'll help me to determine whether or not it is worth Discussing or not. Maybe after thinking a little bit, we'll realize that I don't want to overreact. Let me say it again. I can't help what other people say to me. I can help how I respond to it. I can't change your perception or whatever happened. I can't do that. But I can say, Lord, help me to deal with it in a way that I can be saved. Sometimes people don't have all the facts. Maybe we discover that things weren't what they seemed to be. So waiting a little bit helps. And it will make me feel better in the end. It will help me understand And it will save me a lot of grief. Here's Proverbs 14, 17 and Proverbs 14, 29. 14, 17 says, He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly. You go on down to verse 29 and said, He that is slow to wrath is is of great understanding, but he that is hastily of spirit exalteth. In other words, words it says, look, just keep yourself 
keep yourself at a place to where you don't have to tell somebody you're sorry. How many of you ever tell somebody you're sorry one time or another in your life? Apologize for something. Man, that's a hard thing to do. Right? To, 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 to tell somebody, I'm sorry. And that, that's why I think the Word of God, Sister Danielle, I think the Word of God leads us in this way. To say, think. Think about it. Don't, don't explode. And then you've got clean up in aisle 13. I think that was a K, Kmart thing, wasn't it? I think it was. The blue, whatever it was. The first thing that will help you handle conflict is that delayed reaction. Think of it this way. If you have a problem with procrastination, is there anybody here tonight that procrastinates? Right? <laughs> I, got, I got some truthful people in here tonight. Procrastinate. Man, my wife is not really a procrastinator. But, I forget things from time to time, and she'll let me know. I don't have Facebook. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I am not a Facebook fan. If you, if you don't know that by now, then did everybody get that? I don't, I am not a, I don't like Facebook. It causes too much drama, too many problems. People tell too much stuff on there. And I'm just really sick and tired of, and people will show me Facebook stuff. I don't care what you eat. How many knows what I'm talking about? People take pictures of their food and want to put it online and, you know. Man, I'm thinking, goodness gracious, if that's where we've come to, then we are in a heap of trouble. And God forbid that something happens like happened to us on Monday when we tried to use our cell phones and could not. All you had on the top of it was S-O-S. We had no service all day. I didn't get mine back to 436. And I thought, you know, I'm doing good. You know, nobody's calling. Then I start thinking about, okay, when this comes back online, it's just going to not shut up. It's going to go ding, ding, da ding, da ding, da ding, da ding. But what, Brother Howard, what is this world going to do? What are the Facebook crew going to do if something happens and that goes offline? They're going to go crazy. Why? Because they're going to feel like They've been in, t in, in contact with anybody around the world. They've got all these different people that subscribe, you know, not subscribe, but what do you call that? Friends. Friends and, and everything else, whether it's Twitter or whatever. If that goes away, what in the world are we going to do? People are going to say, it is surely the end time. And God is about ready to come. Why? Because all that's offline and we can't communicate. So think about it. Procrastination. This is one of those areas I think that it comes in handy. Procrastinate a little bit before you respond. Procrastinate your anger. Delay. Everybody say delay. At least for a little while. And then a lot of times that will cause you not to fly off the handle and you can deal with it reasonably. I want to think about I want to evaluate. Second thing, everybody say the second thing. The second thing is, if I can put it this way, respond. If you got to respond, respond firmly, but gently. Everybody say gently. Amen. You got to be gentle. You got to be gentle. Because when you're in conflict with another person, you don't have to, you don't have to put heat on your words or in order to somebody you know have an impact 
you know, like, 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 <laughs> like I feel like I got to raise my voice, shake my fist for you to get what I'm going to say. You know, I always knew what my mom was going to say. She didn't really have to raise her voice or anything. All she did was point that bony finger. And she would do her eyebrows a certain way. And I knew, I knew that little finger was a little crooked. You don't have to lose it. Amen. You don't have to lose it. You just got to be willing to follow through on what you're saying. The problem is sometimes we fool ourselves into thinking that it's easier to intimidate somebody else by yelling and screaming. That's our problem today in this world. It doesn't matter. The media does it. Everybody does it. They yell over each other. They scream. They holler. And nobody gets anywhere. You're not going to deal with a problem that way. We got to keep it up. Pro- Proverbs 29 11 says this, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it till afterwards. Another translation says, I don't like to use this word, but it's in the translation. Stupid people express their anger openly, but sensible people are patient, holding back. It has been said that the less weight your words carry, the more volume you have to put behind them. Because whenever we're trying to attempt to resolve conflicts with somebody, you just need to say what you need to say. But be gentle about it. How many of you have ever been reading the Word of God and you're reading that Word of God and man, all of a sudden, man, you're like, oh my goodness. And it's that Word, that's that gentle Word that God just kind of just kind of plugs away at us until we're willing to address it in our lives. So, so you know, there's no need in threatening somebody. No need in trying to, you know, intimidate somebody. Just say what you mean and mean what you say. Because too often we take the opposite approach, right? How many has ever been yelled at? Doesn't feel too good, does it? Right? Being yelled at? Somebody screaming at you? When I, you know, ride around with the officers before, and you'd come into certain situations, and it's like, man, I'm glad I don't live this way. Now, my wife, she'll get aggravated at me every now and then, right? But that's normal. You live with somebody long enough, you're going to get aggravated, right? Amen. But you don't have to yell and scream and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to get huffy and puffy. You don't have to be sarcastic. You don't, you know, don't, don't, call, pe- don't call names. Right? Things that are going to hurt. Because when you do that, it's going to be hard to resolve it. You know. But how are we, we don't, we don't need to, you know, look at somebody and say, man, that was, you're ignorant. You know, in today's world, though, they don't use words like ignorant. They got some other choice words that they use. That's just a Holy Ghost word right there. <laughs> right? And you got you got you got Pentecostal slang words or angry words sometimes when you get all puffed up about something and aggravated about something. But if you're if you're having conflict, say what you got to say if you need to, but wait on it, delay it, think about it, you know, look at it, make an effort to be as as gentle as you can. You don't have to be cruel. Turn to your neighbor and say, "We don't have to be cruel." Amen. But we need to, you know, it might need to be discussed. Without ultimatums, without threats, come on, say praise the Lord. Simply just state what you got to state from your perspective about the situation. And remember Proverbs 15, 1. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So, in other words, you can make the situation worse. But we need to strive to be like Christ, we, we need them to know that, look, I'm not going to jeopardize my Christianity over something. So I'm going to be as kind as I can be. 
Amen. I'm going to win this race. Here's a little deal. Perhaps we should strive to be like this saintly looking old fella who was running to catch the bus. And just as he, it appeared like he was winning the race, the bus driver with a fiendish smirk pulled away from the curb and the wheels splashed muddy water all over the old man. And the old man gently murmured, May his soul find peace. Still more softly, he added, sooner, better than later. Did you all get that? A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up. Here's a translation of that. A gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. How many has been in that situation? Number three, strive for a solution. Solutions are important. We need to be solution-based people. Find a way. Whatever you're facing, whatever the conflict is that you're facing, find yourself having the same argument again and again, day after day, over and over. Do we find ourselves repeatedly telling somebody or repeatedly being told everything is wrong with the relationship, but nothing is ever fixed. Look, I want you to know straight up right now, I want a good relationship with everybody. Yes, I do. Even people that I don't agree with, I, want, I at least want to have a good relationship with them. Right? Doesn't, doesn't matter who it is, I, I want it. And, and, and if I'm able to fix it, I'm going to fix it. But this is the course that... Many times, too many marriages, friendships, uh, parent and child relationships, and work-related conflicts, this is, this is the way it tends to take. People want to go on and on and on about the problem, but they don't want to sit down and work out the, the problem. Right? How many ever been in a union? I've been, I, I, I was teamsters, bless God. You got quiet on that. Not for long. But I was there for probably two years, close to it, whatever it was, when I was in college and I was working for UPS. And you know, we, you would have these conflicts every now and then, or, or um, my mind just went blank. What do you call it? Negotiations, or is that what they are? What? Huh? Negotiations, whatever. And you, you know, you're going to go over your structure and all these kind of things you want to do, right? And then sometimes, if there's not an agreement, then they will strike. Uh, you know, and I mean, if you've, if you've been around this town long enough, you'll know that we had a big factory here in town or steel place, Armco, and from time to time they'd go on strike. Right? But the point was that they would get to a table and they would begin to negotiate. Right? That, that's no different than you and I in our personal relationship. Sometimes you just got to get to a place to where you can negotiate what's going on in your life. How can we fix this? How can we make it right? What can we do to be on good terms? Finding a solution, that's the most important thing. Because most people, when someone is, is mad at them, we're not interested in hearing what they got to say, right? How many have ever been there before? I have. I'll be honest with you. Since I've got the microphone. Yeah, there's been times where I'm like, hey, I don't, I, they, they don't have nothing to say I want to hear. Right? Nothing to say. I've said that recently. It's all got to do with politics, but I've said that. They don't have anything to say I want to hear. Nothing. Zero, nada. Right? But then I got to thinking, I said, well, wait a minute. Why should I allow something like that to separate me from people that I've known for years? I'm not going to do that. Why? 
I start negotiating, Brother Howard, in my own mind, coming to a resolution or resolving something that I feel is very important because sometimes you might get to that place where you feel like, I, I just, I'm done. But obviously discussing the problem is part, that's part of finding the solution. But sometimes we don't want to talk about it. If I'm having conflict with somebody else, it's because a lot of times they're doing something to us. And then sometimes we just like, I don't know what to do. And sometimes there's no fixing something, right? I come to that conclusion. There's sometimes there's no fixing something. And I'm going to get hurt. I, I'm, I just know that. I'm going to get, I'm going to get hurt. But I, but, but, but I can fix it in my life. I can, I can, get, my, I can get myself right before God. Because I don't, I don't want to let that affect me overall. And I want to do that. So <clears throat> let's go to Proverbs 15. <clears throat> By the way, if you have conflict, if your conflict, conflict is with maybe your employment or your employer, your boss, <laughs> I was thinking, you know, if, if your conflict is with your boss, let me just say this. I highly suggest that you be the one to not agree with it, but you got to come to the conclusion they are signing your paycheck. Work for the long. Understand, you can work things out down the road, but be careful with losing your cool in the moment because they're the ones that's in control. And they can tell you, see you later. Right? Just a thought. Turn to your neighbor and say, just a thought. Because honestly, guess, guess who's got to change? Now later on, they might see the error of the way or whatever if, if they are wrong, and you can work things out. But just remember, it's good to have delayed reaction, even in that situation. Because if you want to resolve it, you have to be willing to to deal with it in your own self. Proverbs 15, 18 says, A wrath of man stirs up strife, but he that slows anger appeases strife. Amen. Strife. Strive for a solution. Everybody say a solution. All right, I'm losing track of time here. Let me just uh, let me just tell you a little story here. There's a man from California who had gone through a divorce and in California the law's requirements <clears throat> that they pay alimony as well as child support. So he found a company that specialized in printing personal checks and ordered in the words of the salesman that filled out his order the most unusual set of personalized checks he had ever seen or sold. This man wanted every special picture printed on the checks. Very special. And it seems that he wanted his order of checks to be printed for the sole purpose of making these alimony payments to his former wife. The question I'm going to ask you is, guess what the picture was on the check, that was printed on the check? You ready for it? It was a picture showing him beautifully kissing his new wife. Crazy, right? But understand, spiritually mature people aren't interested in keeping conflict alive in your life. I'm not. How about you? Solomon was talking about it. And uh, there are, as he said, more inclined to calm a, a quarrel, to avoid strife, to cover a wrong whenever possible. And so if we're in conflict with other people, don't, you can't avoid it. You've got to deal with it because you've got to be right. I've got to deal with it. I've got to deal with it first and foremost in my own life. I got to strive for a solution with me. I, I, I don't want to revisit something day by day. Amen. But I want to be right. See, the thing about it, when it's all said and done, let me just say it this way. I want to be right because I have to face the Lord one of these days. I want to be right because I know He's going to come for His people one of these days. I want to be right because if I've got unresolved issues. I, now, let me say it again. Let me qualify it. I can't deal with everything, but I can, I can deal with how I respond. 
And even though it may not be, it may not be fixed, I can still make sure my heart's right. I, I can be wounded, I can be hurt, but, and, and, and it may, it may kind of be there and gnaw at me every now and then, but I understand that as the psalmist tells me, look, deal with it. Be right before God, because that's the most important thing. Everything else you're thinking about, it'll come and go. But you've got to think about your life as far as eternity is concerned. Because nothing else matters, right? Nothing else matters. No matter what we do, no matter what we say, no matter where we go, all that stuff will be with us. But if I can give it over to the Lord, then I know everything's going to be okay. Do you believe that today? Be, be a peacemaker. Be peaceable. Amen. And I think, I, think, I think we'll live longer. I pray we do. Let's stand together. Amen. We're going to pray. I, I, I'm not for sure. I, I will tell you this. If you need prayer tonight, this is something that, that, that I'm going to do. If anybody else is speaking, I don't know what they'll do. But if you need prayer tonight, we're going to open this up for prayer in the front. But I do want to pray. I don't know. I did not get it to them before the service. So I can't remember if they prayed for Sister Blackford. Did you pray for Sister Blackford? Excellent. Because uh, she had let us know that on their way to church, they had to turn around and go home because she got sick. Amen. So we want to pray for her and uh, uh, the rest that we're praying. Does anybody need prayer? You want us to pray for you tonight? Just give you a minute. Sister Kathy, come on up. Amen. Brother Howard. Some of you ladies want to gather around Sister Kathy. Anybody else need prayer? Don't get quiet. If you come up to the front and you need prayer, just kind of raise your hand so I can see you. If not, we're going to pray for Sister Kathy. You want to tell them what it is in Jesus' name. Let's pray. To raise your hands together right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, you know the need before we ask. We pray, Lord Jesus, for Sister Kathy's need. Minister, Lord God, in a powerful way. Man, you are our strength and our salvation, our help in a time of need. Lord God, you're able to minister. You are the balm of Gilead, the great physician. We call upon you. You are our strength, oh God. We look unto you tonight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.